welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham satchidanandam bandeham yokhilan jagat chari karti bari bharti sanjari harti lilaya विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम योखिलन जगत चरी करति बरी भरति संजरी हरति लीलया इन दिस कोर्स वी आर स्टडिंग द थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट टाइप्स ऑफ समास इन संस्कृत नेमली द अव्ययी भाव समास बहुव्रीही समास एंड द द्वंद्व समास Out of them, we have already studied avyayi bhava samasa, and currently we are focused on the bahuvrihi samasa, which is an extremely important type of samasa in Sanskrit, a very peculiar kind of samasa. The structure of the bahuvrihi samasa can be represented in the form of an equation, a brief equation at that, in the following manner, where we have x and y as two independent, two different entities. in terms of the word form as well as the meaning as well as the accent there is a plus sign in between which indicates that they are semantically related and so the speaker of sanskrit has decided to merge them together and then the process begins and culminates in the generation of the output in the form of x y namely one unit so the input is in the form of two units the output is in the form of one unit xy in terms of the meaning generated as well as the word form as well as the accent so xy can be said to possess three features namely aikarthya ekarthata aikapadya or ekapadata and aikasvarya or ekasvarata these are the features of samasa in general as far as the bahuvrihi samasa is concerned none of x and y are marked in the bold characters which indicates that none of them acts as the head of the samasa in case of avyayi bhava and tatpurusha we showed the respective heads with the bold characters in avyayi bhava samasa x was shown in the bold to indicate that x acts as the head of x y in the tatpurusha samasa y was marked with bold characters indicating that y acts as the head of xy in the tatpurusha samasa but in bahuvrihi samasa neither x nor y acts act as the head of the samasa so the head of this samasa lies outside of the samasa which is very very peculiar in the ashtadhyayi the bahuvrihi samasa is dealt with at various places the samasa vidhayaka sutras namely the compound prescribing sutras they are stated in the section beginning with 2223 shesha bahuvrihi up to 2228 tena saheti tulya yoge incidentally 2229 is charthe dwandvaha and we have studied all these sutras prescribing the bahuvrihi samasa then we have the samasanta pratyay vidhayaka sutras which talk about the samasanta suffix the suffix that is added at the end of the samasa this is a very big section beginning with 54113 up to 54160 that is the end of the fifth adhyaya and as we have noted in this big section there is another small section in which the samasanta adeshas are prescribed and not exactly the pratyayas we are yet to see and study this particular section swara vidhayaka sutras are stated in 6.2 6.2.1 is bahuvriha prakritya purvapadam and then we have sutras from 62106 up to 120 and then another set 
namely 6 to 162 onwards up to 6 to 177. These are the sutras dealing with the swara of the Bahurihi Samasa. This is how the Bahurihi Samasa is stated in the Ashtadhyayi. Currently, we are focusing on the Pumbad Bhava, a very important operation that happens in the Bahuvrihi Samasa mainly. We have already studied the Sutra that states the conditions, the basic conditions when fulfilled, the Bahuvrihi Samasa takes place and the Pumbad Bhava operation happens. In this lecture, in order to understand the sutra better, let us also study the counter examples, the pratyodaharanas, as they are called in the tradition of the Paninian grammar. Let us study them one by one. What we do here is that we ask questions to each and every word and check what this word brings about in the overall sutra. The idea is that it is absolutely essential to have this word in the sutra for if this word is omitted from the sutra the sutra would shape in a particular manner and would generate the output which is non-desirable so in order to avoid that we need to have a particular word in the sutra and that is how the pratyodaharana is structured this is dealt with in detail in our work called Pratyudaharana Vimarsha, a Sanskrit work which is yet to be published. Let us come back to the question in hand. The question is what is Pumbad Bhava? And this is the explanation. Let us revisit it. A feminine form generated by adding a suffix to the nominal root. Nominal root is a Pratipadika goes back to the form of the nominal root. I repeat, a feminine form goes back to the form of the nominal root is called Pumbad Bhava. The location of this Pumbad Bhava is the Purva Pada of a compound. This happens in the Purva Pada with limited environment existing around either in the Purva Pada or in the Uttara Pada which we have already studied in the previous lecture. So for example, the equation which is stated in the next bullets also explains this particular fact. Now we have Pratipadika plus Stri Pratyaya plus Su. This is first Pada and the second Pada is Pratipadika plus Stri Pratyaya plus Su. Here we have two Subandhas. They are interrelated. Now look at the internal structure. The Stri Pratyaya is added after a Pratipadika. Now this Sutra says that such a Pratipadika should be Bhashita Punska. It also says that the Stri Pratyaya should never be Ong. These are the two conditions on the Purva Pada and the other condition is that it should be co-referential with the Uttara Pada. After having studied these conditions on the Purva Pada, let us now study the conditions for the Uttara Pada. Uttara Pada also has the structure Pratipadika plus Stri Pratyaya plus Su. Now, this Stri Pratyaya is the first condition. The second condition is that the Pratipadika plus Stri Pratyaya in the second Pada should be co-referential with the Pratipadika plus Stri Pratyaya in the first Pada. The other important condition is that the Pratipadika should not contain a Purana Pratyaya. And another condition is that the Pratipadika plus Stri Pratyaya should not be a part of the list that begins with Priya, etc. When these conditions get fulfilled, we apply the Pumad Bhava technique. But first, we have the Samasa Saudhnya, then we apply the Pratipadika Saudhnya, and so on the final bullet on the slide, we apply the Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoha and generate this output, namely Pratipadika plus 3 Pratyaya plus 0 plus Pratipadika plus 3 Pratyaya plus 0. Now we have Pratipadika plus 3 Pratyaya, this is the Purva Pada, plus Pratipadika plus 3 Pratyaya as the Uttara Pada. Here, 
the stri pratyaya in the purva pada is removed so this pratibhadika pa stri pratyaya goes back to its pratibhadika form and so we have the next bullet next step in the derivation process which is like this pratibhadika plus 0 plus pratibhadika plus stri pratyaya and then the process continues but pratibhadika plus 0 plus pratibhadika plus stri pratyaya is the effect of the operation of pumvad bhava this is the sutra we have already studied this let us quickly relook at this at it the sutra is striya pumvat that is the main sentence bhashita pumskadanu samanadhikarane striyam apurani priyadishu this is 6334 i repeat striya pumvat this is the main sentence now the rest is the qualification bhashita pumskadanu this is one unit samanadhikarane striyam apurani priyadishu bhashita pumskadanu this is the qualification of the purva pad samanadhi karane striyam apurani priyadishu these are the qualifications of the uttara pad so striya is 6/1 of 3 in place of a word denoting feminine gender pumbat means like a nominal root form bhashita pumskat is panchami ekavachana which means immediately after the word which is a bhashita pumsk so the overall meaning of the sutra is the following immediately before an uttara pada that is in the purva pada in place of a word whose nominal root or pratipadika is such that it declines in all the three genders denoting the same core meaning and two which does not end in the suffix um ending in the feminine suffix is placed its nominal root that is pratipadika form if the uttara pada is co-referential with it two it denotes the feminine gender three it denotes it does not end in the purana suffix and four it does not belong to the group of words which begins with the word priya etc i repeat immediately before an uttara pada that is in the purva pada that is uttara pade in place of a word whose nominal root or pratibhadika is such that it declines in all three genders denoting the same core meaning bhashita pumskat which does not end in the suffix ong anung ending in the feminine suffix striyah is placed its nominal root or pratibhadika form pumvat if the uttara pada is co-referential with it samanadhikarane it denotes the feminine gender striyam it does not end in the purana suffix apurani it does not belong to the group of words which begins with the word priya priyadishu apurani priyadishu so this is the equation form of the sutra where we have the input in the form of pratipadika plus stri pratyaya plus pratipadika plus stri pratyaya now the stri pratyaya in the purva pada is marked with the bold characters mainly because it is this on which the operation of pumvad bhava takes place and this gets deleted so we have pratibhadika plus 0 as the purva pada plus pratibhadika plus stri pratyaya as the generated output to state it elaborately we can say that the pratibhadika should be bhashita pumska and then we should have a stri pratyaya which is not ong this is the status of the purva pad and then the uttara pad should be having a samanadhikarana pratipadika plus the stri pratyaya which is not purana or the uttara pad or or it should not end in the group that begins with priya and then the output is bhashita pumska plus 0 plus samanadhikarana pratipadika plus stri pratyaya not purana and not priyadi we have already seen two examples chitragu as well as rupavad bharya now let us proceed in understanding the pratyudaharanas 
which bring home the point that each and every word in the sutra is extremely crucial because it helps avoid under generation as well as over generation which would have caused in the absence of that particular word to which the question is asked uddishta prashna shabda striyaha itikim this is the question here striyaha is the uddishta prashna shabda itikim is the prashna shabda so why should the purva pada be in feminine gender what is the word what is the necessity of the word striyaha to be stated in this sutra as the condition for the purva pada so why should the purva pada be in feminine gender denoted by adding a feminine suffix added to the pratipadika or a nominal root because if the purva pada is not in the nominal in the feminine gender then the operation of pumbad bhava will not take place this is a necessary condition so for example if we have the meaning to be conveyed as one whose sight is on the family which leads the village gramani and kulam is the qualificand which is in neuter gender which indicates that gramani as an adjective which is in, which ends in short e is also neuter drashtir yasya saha so drashtir is the uttarapada so gramani plus su plus drashti plus su this is the alaukika vigraha what happens here is that all other conditions except striyaha are fulfilled so for example gramani is a word which is bhashita pumska then the word drashti which is uttarapada which is in feminine the word drashti is co-referential with gramani the word drashti does not end in the purana pratyaya and the word drashti is not part of the priyadi group of words therefore all conditions fulfilling only one condition is not fulfilled namely striyaha the word gramani does not denote the feminine gender and that is the reason why had there been absence of striyaha in the sutra the pumat bhava would have taken place also in case of this particular form and gramani would have also become pumbat which is not desirable and so pumbat bhava does not take place over here now after the samasa saudnya takes place we apply supodhatu pratipadika yoho so we get gramani plus 0 plus drishti plus su drishti plus 0 and then we join them together and we get the form gramani drishti as the finally derived output of the bahuvrihi samasa then we add the suffix su and we get the form gramani drishti hi one whose sight is on the family which leads the village gramani means a family which leads the village now in this case purva pada is gramani in neuter gender and this means one who leads a village gramani means one who leads a village this is a qualification of any substantive in any of the three genders in the present case it qualifies a family namely kula but this core meaning does not change even when the gender is changed so this qualifies to be termed as bhashita pumska now the uttara pada is drishti now this uttara pada also denotes feminine gender it is co-referential with the purva pada that is gramani now drishti which means sight is neither ending in a purana suffix nor does it belong to priyadi group of words thus all conditions fulfilled except the one that the purva pada does not denote the feminine gender and therefore the pumad bhava does not take place this is the significance or importance of the word striyaha in the sutra having all conditions fulfilled even if just one condition is not fulfilled the samasa cannot take place let us now proceed further and try to see the importance of the other important word bhashita pumska bhashita pumska aditi kim 
हेर उद्दिष्ट शब्द प्रश्नोद्दिष्ट शब्द इज भाषित पुंस्क प्रश्न शब्द इज इति किम एंड द आंसर टू द क्वेश्चन लाइज इन द फैक्ट दैट द वर्ड खटवा भार्य इज टू बी डिराइड सो द क्वेश्चन इज वाई शुड द पूर्वपद बी भाषित पुंस्क वॉट हैपन्स इफ द पूर्वपद इज नॉट भाषित पुंस्क when the core meaning of the pratipadika or nominal root remains the same when the word is used in all three genders the answer to this question is that if because if the purvapada is not vasita pumska then the operation of pumvad bhava will not take place thus being a vasita pumska in the form of a purvapada pratipadika is a necessary condition for a bahuvrihi samasa to take place let us look at the derivation of the example namely khatwa bharya so the meaning to be conveyed is someone whose bed is his wife so khatwa bharya yasya sah this is the laukika vigraha and the alaukika vigraha is khatwa plus su plus bharya plus su here khatwa plus su is the purvapad bharya plus su is the uttarapad so the word khatwa is in the feminine form when we add the suffix a to the word khatwa so khatwa plus a so this is a feminine form striyaha is there now if we go to the uttarapada the pratipadika is bharya this is also formed by adding the feminine suffix a to the word bhargya so this is also a stri pratyayant uttarapada this is samanadhikarana with the purvapada namely khatwa this does not end in the purana pratyaya and this uttarapada does not belong to the list which begins with priya all conditions fulfilled except one namely that khatwa is not bhashita pumska that means that when you add the feminine suffix then the word khatwa denotes the bed otherwise the word khatwa denotes something else and therefore this is not bhashita pumska because the pravritti nimitta changes and so in the absence of this one condition the pumbad bhava does not take place and khatwa does not become khatwa rather it remains as khatwa so we have khatwa plus 0 plus bharya plus 0 as the next step in the derivation and so we get khatwa bharya after doing the shortening at the end of the samasa by the sutra गोस्त्री और उपसर्जन से सो वी हैव खटवा भार्य सो वी हैव खटवा भार्य एज द फाइनली डिराइव्ड बहुरी समास आउटपुट देन वी हैव खटवा भार्य प्लस सु एंड वी गेट खटवा भार्य एज द फाइनली डिराइव्ड फॉर्म टू बी यूज इन द सेंटेंस हियर द पूर्व पद इज खटवा दैट इज अ बेड दिस वर्ड डिनोट्स ओनली फेमिन इन जेंडर इन दिस मीनिंग it is not used in all three genders to denote this core meaning hence this is not a bhashita pumska word so all other conditions applying namely purvapada denoting feminine gender purvapada being coreferential with the uttarapada uttarapada denoting the feminine gender it being coreferential with the purvapada the uttarapada not ending in the purana suffix and the uttarapada not belonging to the words which are part of the group priyadi the condition of the purvapada being a bhashita pumska is not fulfilled and hence the operation of the pumvad bhava does not take place and so we don't have this form khatva bharya but we have the form khatva bharya as the finally derived bahuvrihi samasa output Let us now study the next pratyudaharana, namely anonga itikim. Anonga itikim. Why should the purva pada denote femininity, but not by the suffix ong? That is the question. So anonga iti anong is the prashno dista shabda. Itikim is the prashna vachaka shabda. Pramavandhu bharya is the word which is generated because of the mention of the word anung in the sutra so the prashna is why should the purva pada denote femininity 
but not by the suffix ung. Ung is a suffix added to the nominal root to denote femininity by the sutra ung utaha for 166. And the answer to the question is because if the Purvapada ends in the suffix ung stated by 4166, then the operation of Pumpad Bhava will not take place as simple as that. So it indicates that the Purvapada should be devoid of, should not be have the suffix ung. This is a necessary condition for the Pumpad Bhava to take place. Let us look at the example. When the example is this, which means someone whose wife is a characterless Brahmin female who is not engaged in the activity of learning. Repeat, someone whose wife is a characterless Brahmin female who is not engaged in the activity of learning. Brahmabandhuhu Bharya Yasyasaha. This is the Laukika Vigraha. So we have Brahmabandhu plus Su plus Bharya plus Su. Brahmabandhu plus Su, this is the Purvapada. Bharya plus Su is the Uttarapada. So Samasa Saudhnya takes place. Pratipadika Saudhnya also takes place. And then we apply Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho. So we have Brahmabandhu plus Bharya. Now in this case, the conditions are fulfilled. Namely that the Purvapada ends in the feminine suffix. It is co-referential with the Uttarapada. It also contains a Pratipadika Brahmabandhu which is Bhashita Pumska. Uttarapada also ends in the feminine suffix. Uttarapada is co-referential with the Purvapada. Uttarapada does not have the Purana Pratyaya. Uttarapada does not belong to the list of words that begin with Priya. Having all the conditions fulfilled except the one, namely Anungaha, here the word ends in the suffix Ung prescribed by Ungutaha. And so Pumbad Bhava does not take place and the word Brahmabandhu does not go back to its nominal root or Pratibhadika form. It remains as it is and so we have the Uttarabhada Raswa taking place because of Gostriyorupa Sarjanasya and so we have the finally derived compound output in the form of Brahmavandhu Bharya. Then we add the suffix su, we get Brahmavandhu Bharya as the pada to be used in the sentence. Here the Purva pada is Brahmavandhu. This word denotes feminine gender after adding the suffix ung to the Pratipadika namely Brahmavandhu. The word Brahmabandhu denotes the same core meaning, namely a Brahmin who is characterless and who is not engaged in the activity of learning when used in all three genders. Vrutta swadhyaya hinayaha brahmana jatau etau bahuvrihi vartete. So Brahmabandhu etc. These are the two bahuvrihis which denote the brahmana jati which is Vrutta Swadhyaya Hina, which is devoid of characters, that is Vrutta, as well as self-study, that is Swadhyaya. With the help of this explanation, we can say that the word Purva, the, the word Brahmabandhu is also a Bhashita Pumska word. So all other conditions applying, namely Purvapada denoting feminine gender, Purvapada being co-referential with the Uttarapada, Purvapada being a Bhashita Mamska, Uttarapada denoting the feminine gender and it being co-referential with the Purvapada. The Uttarapada not ending in the Purana suffix and the Uttarapada not belonging to the words which are part of the group Priyadi. The condition of the Purvapada not in, ending in the suffix Ung is not fulfilled. Only one condition is not fulfilled and hence the operation of the Pumpad Bhava does not take place. To summarize, Pumbat Bhava is a peculiar operation stated to the Purvapada of the Bahuvrihi Samasa. 
it requires both the purva pada as well as the uttara pada denoting feminine gender as well as same referent as the basic condition for the sutra to apply in addition there are certain conditions that the purva pada has to fulfill and certain other conditions that the uttara pada also has to fulfill when all the specific conditions are fulfilled the feminine form in the purva pada goes back to its pratipadika or nominal root form this is what is known as the pumbad bhava we continue studying this and other aspects of the bahuvrihi samasa in the next lecture thank you very much these are the texts referred to thank you very much